What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with the review for The Real Housewives of New York City. This is going to be season 13, episode number 8, and the episode is titled A Harlem Night. Now, before we get into this review, you guys, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then what are we doing? Like, why are we still going out on dates, you guys? Hit that subscribe button. It's free. It really is. All right, you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review, shall we? All right, you guys. So you know what? Let's go ahead and get Ramona out the way. Ramona, Ramona, Ramona. So in the beginning of this episode, we see all the ladies as they're getting ready for Ebony's Harlem Nights nice party, right? So we see um, Luann. We saw Luann getting ready. We saw um, uh, Ebony getting ready. Then we saw Ramona. Ramona was picking up her friend Brashawn, right? The, um, you know, the other, app, the other black woman that's on this show, this cast, this season. <coughs> now, before we actually get there, Ramona said something to me that kind of, you know, stood out in my head when she was talking to Ebony about bringing Brashawn to the Harlem Nights thing. She said to Ebony, she says, oh, I feel like you and, um, and um, Brashawn will get along just great. And my question to that was, do you think they'll get along great because they are two African-American women? Or do you think they'll get along great because, you know, they maybe have something in common? I don't know. That was what my whole mindset was. Like, why do you think that they'll get along so great? And honestly, I think it's just because of the latter, because they're two black women. Not all black people are going to like all black people. I'm just going to put it out there. Not everybody that is black is going to get along with each other. Just because we're black don't mean we got to like each other. But yeah, so we see Ramona. So Ramona, she picked up Brashawn, right, to go to um, Ebony's Harlem Nights party. So we find out that, you know, they met each other over the summer, right, through some friends. Um, so Ramona at this, she's talking about she's never been to Harlem. Girl, that ain't no shock. That is not a shock to me at all that you've never been to Harlem. That's not a shock at all. Didn't surprise me at all. So then, you know, she was talking to... Um, Actually, Bashan was like, you know, it was so funny because at one point you told me that, you know, my long eyelashes that I wear, those were too long for the daytime. And I was like, wow, really? OK, you thought that was funny. OK, Bashan, I, I mean, I guess if you want to say that was funny, but whatever, I, I wouldn't have found that funny. I would not have found that funny. They're too long for the daytime. What in the hell does that mean that my eyelashes are too long for the daytime? But whatever. So I'm I'm actually going out of order of the episode. I'm just talking about Ramona at this point. So we see Ebony later in the episode. And Ebony went over to Ramona's house, right? So Ebony is asking Ramona how she felt about the Harlem Nights party, right? And I'm going to talk about the Harlem Nights party in just a little bit. But Ramona was lying through her teeth about how she felt about that Harlem Nights party. I'm like, Ramona, you are lying through your teeth. Like, I can see it. She's talking about she she had fun and you know she she felt like she learned some stuff. Girl, use a lie. A lie don't care who tell it. You were uncomfortable as hell at that party. Even I was uncomfortable. And I'm a black man. I'm black. That party made me uncomfortable. And we're, like I said, we're gonna talk about why that party made me uncomfortable. We're gonna talk about it. But Ramona was lying through her teeth, girl. You were uncomfortable. Just say, you know, I appreciated you inviting me to the party. But I was just a little bit uncomfortable with the party because we later saw in the episode, they showed us Ramona, Sonia, and Luann talking about the party. Like, y'all, you were uncomfortable. It's okay to say that. You won't come off racist if you say, Ebony, you know, I appreciate you with what you did with the party. But for me, it was just a little bit uncomfortable, you know, with what you did. It was just a little bit uncomfortable but I, nonetheless I do appreciate what you did and I you know I appreciate you and I, I and I felt like I learned a little bit more about you with that party but you definitely could have said I was uncomfortable as hell it's okay to say that there's nothing wrong with saying I'm uncomfortable it's not gonna make you look racist if you say that I was uncomfortable it's not gonna make you look racist it's just it, it'll, it'll just it's really not gonna make you look racist but you sitting her lying about the party is bad. So then um, Ebony wants to talk about the election, right? 
Ramona shuts that down immediately. I'm like, Ebony, did you not watch the season when you know who was elected? She and Carol had an issue with she Carol. She didn't even go to Carol's party because she supports you know who. And then she was talking about oh, you know, they, I guess it's, I guess it's like days after. I guess this is before the Saturday when we found out that Joe Biden was. So this actually must have been like. This actually must have been like either Thursday or Friday. Because at that, when they were talking about it, this is because it's days. So it must have been, before, it must have been either that Thursday or that Friday. Because like I said, we found out on Saturday that Joe was, um, you know, the president-elect. Because she was talking about, the, she was talking about the mail-in ballots and all that stuff. I'm like, girl, shut up. You sound just as ignorant as your, pres- your ex-president did. So then, I, I really wanted Ramona to shut the fuck up. I really did. So then she was talking about the fact that, you know, she educated herself. You guys remember in one episode, she rem- um, she men- Ebony mentioned microaggressions. She mentioned white fragility. So Ramona says she went and ed- she looked it up. I don't know if you looked it up or production told you. I don't care. Then she mentions Madam CJ Walker, but she said EJ. She got so pissed off when Ebony tried to correct her. The lady's name is C.J. Walker, not E.J. Like, like you wouldn't want nobody to call you Tamona. Like, girl, miss me with that shit. That's it for Ramona. Let's move on, you guys. Ah, oh, crap. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Ebony, right? So, Ebony, baby girl, I like you. I really do. So, the Harlem Nights party, you can literally tell that like I said, you could tell some of the ladies were uncomfortable. I don't think that Sonia was uncomfortable, and I don't think Leah was uncomfortable. Luann, I don't know how to... I, I couldn't really grasp Lou, so I can't really say that Lou was uncomfortable, but Ramona was 1,000% uncomfortable. Now, I will give it to the ladies when they were going down them steps. I was like, oh, no, because I'm pigeon, I'm pigeon so so I wouldn't be able to, I don't like steps, especially steps that go down. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I actually hate steps in general. And I hate narrow steps. I hate narrow steps. That's what I should have said. I hate narrow steps. And all steps look narrow. So I was with the ladies. So, you know, since um, Ebony has been immersed in the ladies' lives, she wants to just, you know, bring them into her world. And I was cool with her bringing them to Harlem. I was cool with this. You know, give them, get them outside of the city. I was cool with that. So all the ladies were introduced to Bashan, correct? correct so ebony um how do, where am i at okay so the ladies were sitting they were um have we got there yet no so at one point in the episode um ebony had the ladies take a picture right ramon was like oh no this this doesn't look right black people black the black women on one side and the white women on one side i was like oh Okay, I was okay. I was that was the one time I was okay with Ramona in this episode. I was like, okay, I get it. You you want to mix and mix and mingle? Cool, I got that. So, um, Ebony she also presented the ladies with gifts at the table, right when they sat down. So she presented them all with different candles, right? Cool. I was cool with the candles. I was cool with the candles. I was really cool with the candles. Where Ebony lost me at was when she um began giving these white women an education in black history. I get where Ebony's coming from. I do get Ebony, but my whole thing with Ebony is, especially with this episode, my problem with Ebony was the fact that I get it, but it's, you know, it's not up to us as black men, black women, black people in general. It's not up to us to educate these white people on our history it really isn't up to us and i don't know why ebony is taking i don't know if it's ebony that's taking this plight or if it's production saying to ebony hey why don't you get in there and educate these ladies on um billy holiday um who else was it it was billy holiday it was um somebody else shall i can remember them names because i tuned out to be quite honest with you because I was irritated and I was annoyed, to be quite honest, which I was just really annoyed. 
I was like, why is Ebony doing this black history lesson to these white women? <coughs> and to be honest with you guys, I think the only women in this group that would be even reluctant to actually listen to this kind of educational lesson would be Leah and Sonya. I don't feel like Luann, wa- I don't feel like Lou wants to hear it. I don't feel that, I definitely don't feel like Ramona wants to hear it. Ramona is an all lives matter person. That's who she is. And her friend next to her is an all lives matter person too. Brashawn lost me in this episode. I thought, I, when I saw Brashawn, I was like, oh my God, beautiful black woman. Then when she opened up her mouth, I was like, oh, hell no. We're all equal. We're all the same. Girl, no, we are not. We're not all the same. We are not. We are literally not the same. These privileged white women live different lives than what we live. (laughs) No, we're not all the same. We don't all have the same experiences. Absolutely not. Stop saying, don't, Rashawn, never say that dumb shit again in your life. Do not ever reiterate, regurgitate, re- don't re- re- reiterate, regurgitate, resuscitate, don't read anything, those words ever again in life. We are not the same. Not the same. We don't have the same experiences in life. <coughs> Girl, she pissed me off in that. She pissed me off in that scene. So then Ramona told uh, Ebony, you know, Ebony, I might have to leave early because um, I'm not feeling that well. Sonia, I love you. I lo- y'all know I love Sonia over here on this channel. <coughs> love Sonia to death. Sonia's like, oh, is it that bird I go again? She's like, yeah, you know me so well. Girl, a lie don't care who tell it. It ain't no damn vertigo. I know what vertigo feels like. That is not vertigo. She's like, oh, you know, watch this. When I close my eyes, I tilt to the side a little bit. A drunk person will do that. All you got to do is give a drunk person a, a few drinks and tell them to close their eyes. So what are they going to do? Like a teapot. Tilt. Vertigo is an inner ear infection. It's an inner ear thing. Like inner ear. And <laughs> you can't even close your you can't even close like with me when I had that that thing that I had earlier this year a few actually a few weeks ago actually I think I had it the other night too like your head is spinning like even when you close your eyes it still spins like you can't even you can't even focus on anything like Ramona was full of shit Ramona was literally full of shit because girl if you couldn't fo- if you had vertigo you wouldn't even been able to make it to that party. You would have actually had to say, I can't make it to this party. (laughs) Because it's it's motion sickness. It's motion sickness. Like, when I I had it earlier, when I had that little spout with, um, I think I had a spout with Vertigo. When I had it, I was actually driving in my car and I was like, oh shoot, the the road, I'm like, everything is just spinning in this car. And when I got home, I laid down and then I th- woke up and I threw up. Ramona didn't say shit about throwing up. Ramona was just lying. So then we also found a little bit about Brashawn. I'm not upset. I'm not I'm not gonna throw Brashawn away. I just didn't like that whole all lives matter comment. So we find out so Brashawn told Leah that she had terminal cancer, but she's a 13 year survivor. So congratulations on that one for sure, for sure. <clears throat> so Bashan is much like Leah. <clears throat> and why I say that is because when Ramona eventually left, Bashan was talking about how her girl her, one of her girlfriends went out is dating a guy who has a small penis. I was like, ooh. Your other girlfriend that just left, she went, you know what? Actually, I want that to happen. I want Bashan to talk about penis at the table in front of Ramona. So that way we can see if it's just Leah that she feels that way about or if it's everybody but my thing is it's just Leah that she does that to she does not do it to Sonya Sonya has talked about dicks so much on this show Sonya has talked about dicks dicks, 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 dicks and Ramona never checks her about it but whatever um, let's move on you guys damn I didn't mean to go down alright guys next up let's talk about Leah right so Leah, we see Leah, and she is having a um, lunch with um, Ebony, right? So she and Ebony, they are talking about how the Harlem Nights went. 
They think it went well. I don't. I, I didn't think it went well at all. Because like I said, I just feel that the lady, some of the ladies were reluctant to learn what Ebony was trying to teach. And I'm even glad that Leah said in this scene that you don't have to be the one to teach these women about African-American history. Now, she did mention, you know, the likes of George Floyd and um, Breonna Taylor. I got that. Ebony, I get where you're coming from. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But like I keep, like I said, and I'm going to reiterate it once more, it is not our job to educate these white women, white men on us. It's not our job. I feel like when it comes to people, if they want to know about our history, if they want to know more about us, baby, you can pick up a book. It's just that easy. You can pick up a damn book. You can Google. You can do whatever you're going to do. You can, there are ways that you can find out about the information about African-American history. It is not our job to teach you about my history. Like, I'm not a teacher. I'm not an educator. And even if I was, I'm not getting paid to do, I, I don't, I'm not going to teach you something that I'm not getting paid for, number one. So, Leah does feel, say that, you know, she feels that um, the women are walking on eggshells with Ebony. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said a few minutes ago, I don't know if this is production doing this or if this is actually Ebony. And I feel like it could be a mix of both Ebony and production. Whoever is behind it, stop it. Like yesterday, I, I'm, I'm over it. I don't want any more history lessons coming out of Ebony K. Williams. I don't want any more. Um, Yeah, even in my notes it says, I want Ebony to stop trying to educate these women let them do the work if they want to learn like that's my whole thing if if they want to especially a Ramona I think Ramona wants to stay in her ignorance I think Ramona wants to be willfully ignorant to things so she, you know because like when she's talking about white she don't know what white fragility is girl use a lie you know what it is you're just being willfully ignorant you're being obtuse you're just doing that stuff like you know what it is um so then we later see Leah <clears throat> so Leah's daughter, Kira, she's getting ready to go to high school, right? So they're meeting with the, an admissions consultant. I, I, I didn't know that they had admissions consultants, for, but I guess it's a, since it's a private school, absolutely. She has to go through the admissions process. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, Leah also says that, you know, she and her mom, they're having a little bit of a spout right now about Kira's going to, you know, what high school Kira goes to. Because I guess Leah's mom wants Kira to go to the school that she went to which is an all-girls Catholic school. Okay. I mean, you know, honestly, when it comes to Leah, I feel like her mom should actually just butt out, to be quite honest with you. Let Leah send her daughter wherever she wants to send her daughter to school. Or or better yet, let Kier make the decision where she wants to go to school. And you guys just be there to be supportive of Kier. Easier said than done. Let's move on and wrap the episode up, you guys. All right, you guys. So, Lou. Um, it really wasn't much with Lou in this episode. We did see... so. Luann's daughter Victoria comes over, right? So, Luann and her daughter, Luann's daughter is not drinking just like Luann isn't. So, my whole thing with Luann is, in this scene, she was talking about, she talked about her, and they did a montage of her, you know, they show when she got arrested in Florida. I have a little bit of an issue when it comes to Lu with, with Luann. I have a big issue when it comes to Luann. Because I think that for me, when it comes to Luann and his whole drinking situ, her whole her own drinking thing, Luann plays with that. I just feel like Luann plays with that. Because, and I'm gonna go back to last season, you guys. So you guys remember in last season, Luann was on the whole thing of I'm not drinking. Remember? And then they went out to that one event, and she picked up that that glass or whatever that bottle, the glass that she was drinking out of, and they were like, Lou, it's alcohol, and Luann kept drinking it. But her whole thing last season was she was on this. She was she was sober. She was sober, right? So now this season she comes back to us and she's once again sober. Now in this scene with her daughter and her assistant, Luann says she doesn't know if she will drink again. She she says I don't know if, if I will or will not drink again. I'm like Luann, you really play with this, and I'm like this is a slap in the face to people who are actually struggling with an alcohol addiction. 
I like this is a, a, a clear slap in the face of people who deal with alcoholism because someone who deals with alcoholism, they struggle with that every single day of their life. They struggle with that. And I think that's what it where it bothers me is someone who is an alcoholic. Oh, I'm not an alcoholic, <laughs> but I have an alcoholic in my family that want to admit that she's an alcoholic. Actually, there's two of them. But, um, you know, for people who are alcoholics, they struggle with that. That is something that they struggle with forever. Because there, there may be days in their lives where something bad happens and they want to go get a drink, but they know that they cannot do that because one, and when it comes to alcoholics, most of them don't know what moderation is. I think that's the biggest thing. They can't drink in moderation. Whereas someone who's not an alcoholic can drink in moderation. Oh my God, it looks like it's going to rain. So I'm about to wrap this up pretty soon. But that's my issue with Lou. Now, Lou did make one good point that I do agree with her about. And it's with Sonya. Sonya definitely... <coughs> Would I say Sonya's an alcoholic? Mm. I don't know if she's an alcoholic per se. I think when it comes to Sonya, I think Sonya doesn't know her limit. I think that's really what it is with Sonya. I think she doesn't know her limit. And then when she starts drinking, she continues to drink. And then she gets to the point where she is belligerent. I think that's what it is with her. I don't necessarily think she has an alcohol problem. I just think that Sonya does not know what her true limit is. But you guys, that's the episode. Please let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. And until the next one, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. And remember, wash your hands, wear your mask or not. Socially distance. Stay blessed, you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. So today is Wednesday. I am going to, <clears throat> when it comes to sisters, the on BT presents the Encore and the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I don't know how these reviews are going to work. Now, I am going to eventually, I'm looking to, I'm looking for some apartments in, in Dallas. So that I can go back home and we can get back on my regular schedule. Um, and even when we get back to Dallas, I think we'll, we'll interchange it. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like these videos in my car? And like, let me know what you guys like. I think we'll do a mixture of both. Like we'll do some in with the green screen and the wall and some in the car. But um, until the next one, you guys, bye. But um, with those reviews, I'm going to do, in, I'm going to do everything in my power for them to be up tonight. If they're not up tonight, you guys can expect them early tomorrow morning. I can guarantee you guys that if you don't get them tonight, they'll be up er first thing in the morning. I'm going I'm to I'm hold myself to that. Because the thing that, that's been going on is I'm staying with my family and I have a little cousin. He screams all night. He doesn't go He doesn't go to sleep until late. So that's the issue why I don't film inside of the house. I film in the car and I don't even watch the episodes. But what we're going to I'm going to watch them tonight. And you guys can, if, if you guys don't see them tonight, you guys will 100% see them in the morning. But I'll see you guys later, guys. Bye.